There are people who find it hard to believe that demons are real. Demonic possession is very real and the Bible establishes it. Quite a good number of times in the New Testament, Jesus had to deal with demons, even in some instances when it came to healing the sick. In so many instances, Jesus dealt with demons and people. For instance, in Mark 1.23, Jesus went into the synagogue and the demon and a man began to cry out until Jesus cast it out. Again, Jesus dealt with the legion of demons in the man of Gadara in Mark 5. The man had 6,000 demons in him. Also, in Luke 9.42, the disciples of Jesus could not cast out a demon from a boy brought to them until Jesus arrived and addressed the situation. Demon possession is very real, and the Bible proves that beyond reasonable doubt. There is nowhere in the Bible that tells us that demon possession stopped when the Bible was written. If it happened then, it is still happening now. Apart from biblical records of the operations of demons, their activities in a person's life could be seen visibly. Matthew 12:43 through 45 says, When an unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then he goeth he, and he taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there, and the last state of that man is worse than the first. Demons will always try to wrestle to have their dwelling place in humans. This is because spirits cannot express themselves on earth except through a human vessel. Demons that do not have a dwelling place are usually going about looking for someone who has no spirit controlling them. In fact, demons could hire themselves to live in a man. As seen in the exposition Jesus gave about when a demon is cast out of a man, the moment the demon returns and finds that the person's life is empty and uncontrolled by any spirit, for fear of being cast out the second time, the demon will hire seven more wicked spirits than itself, and the eight of them will make this person their house. Satan's kingdom is highly organized, well-oiled, and cohesive. Demons work together. They are unified against humanity. Look at what Jesus said in Matthew 12, 43 through 45. One evil spirit will go get seven more evil spirits to come live in a person. Demons work well together. Their egos don't get in their way of their objective. One spirit will gladly call others into its house just so that they will not be cast out. It's sad to see that demons can work together better than some church members. This doctrine against that doctrine, this denomination against that denomination, this ethnicity against that ethnicity. If your Lord and Savior is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the one and only way to God the Father, then you are my brother and my sister. The body of Christ needs to stop being so divided. You even see church congregations divided. Jesus said in Matthew 12, 25, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. Satan's kingdom, is not against itself. They are unified and determined to take as many people with them to hell. Look at how unified they are. We know the story of the man with a legion of devils. Listen to the confrontation between Jesus and the legion of devils. Please note a legion is between 3,000 and 6,000 devils. Mark 5, 6 through 9. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshiped him and cried with a loud voice and said, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God, that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? Here is what I want you to pay attention to. And when he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. Did you notice how he went from singular to plural? My name is Legion, for we are many they are united. A young man shared his family's testimony about demonic possession. While staying at his cousin's house, his cousin's new stepfather was involved in occult practices. So on one occasion when he went there, the stepfather took him and his cousin to attend one of his rituals, and from that moment he changed. The cousin's stepfather gave him a necklace and told him never to throw it away and for him to always wear it. Fast forward to the young man being an adult, he gave his life to the Lord and he decided to throw the necklace away because he knew it was given to him after performing an occult ritual. 
The moment he threw it away, all hell broke loose in his life. Demons began to manifest in his home, appearing and disappearing in his mirrors. Objects would be moving around in his house. On more than one occasion, he would enter rooms in the house and there would be swarms of flies in the rooms, but none of the windows would be open. Hollywood could not make stuff up this man experienced. There was a clear satanic attack in his life, and it all started as soon as he took off this necklace. And it wasn't just one evil spirit, it was more than one. These demon forces would come attacking him in waves. It was as if one evil spirit would manifest itself, and then another one would, and then one after the other. All of them would threaten him to get the necklace back and collect it. He stated, there were at least five evil spirits attacking him. Prior to him throwing his necklace away, he had lived for over 10 years a perfectly normal life. He didn't even know there was such a thing called the supernatural. It all started when he threw this necklace away. Thank God he went to a true Bible-believing church and he was equipped with knowledge he needed to fight these attacks. And over time, the Lord delivered him from the attacks. He never found out the significance of that necklace. He was just happy he was delivered from the forces of darkness that kept trying to attack him. I give you this story as an example to show you that Satan's kingdom is not divided. Now, let's move on to demonic possession. When it comes to possession, what demons do to humans is to make them reflect what they want to do and act the way they want to act. Demons are tyrant spirits. Once they gain entrance into anyone's life, such a person will be compelled by them to act the way they wanted without any choice. No one can accommodate a demon and still have the freedom to live the way he or she likes. In Mark 5, the Bible record shows us a man possessed with 6,000 demons. The demons decided that the man should live in the tombs and he had no option but to do so. When the man saw Jesus, he was not the one that spoke, but the demons that were in him spoke. This is exactly how unfortunate many people have been. Demons speak on their behalf and they do what demons enforce them to do. There are some things that humans do which are just unfathomable to the human mind. For instance, a serial killer. No normal person can do such a thing. No one in their right mind can do anything like that. But our society does not believe in evil spirits and demonic possession. There is a documentary I watched about a woman who was an unbeliever who had serious anger issues. Every time she would go into a fit of rage, she would black out and not remember what had happened. And then she was asked why she went into a fit of rage. She would respond saying, the devil made me do it. Demonic influence is a real thing. After people do something horrible or extremely out of character, haven't you ever heard people say, I don't know what came over me? And a great deal of these people don't know what came over them. They are honestly telling the truth. We as Christians, you and I should know that there is a spirit world that exists around us. And we don't only live in a world of humans, but a world of spirits.